Hi there, today we're going to be talking about how you can set up file bases in Mystic and particular ones that are connected to an external network. And in the course of this video I'm going to show you how you can set up some additional settings in your mail in any file so that as the message network that you're connected to sends you files it will automatically handle those files and import them into your file bases. So for the exercise we're going to be looking at the FSX net and there are a number of uh, file areas that you can set up file bases but I'm just going to focus on two key ones which carry the weekly FSX node list which is a file called fsxnet.zip and another file base that we'll set up which carries the weekly info pack which contains information about the network and that file is fsx info.zip and if you're a member of this network they hatch these files out once a week and they send them out with a, um, a file it's called a tick file which contains instructions in it and when your system receives the file and the tick file it will know how to process them and import them into your file bases so that's what we're going to try and achieve today so the first thing we need to do is we need to have a look at the mutil mail in any file again and I'm just going to open up mail in any using my notepad plus plus program and you'll recall that when we last looked at this we were looking at a stanza here that just does the importing the echo mail but now we're going to do a few other things um, we're going to set up some ability to do tossing of tick files uh, ticks and files into the BBS and also if you had others that were subscribed to these file bases it would also send them on to them so I'm going to add and I'm just cutting and pasting from a file that you can't see but just I'm going to work my way through and update this one some additional settings so in the general stanza I'm now enabling a function called file toss and that's really about the only thing I need to do in the general stanza the rest of it is all as you know um, fine because it carries the logging information then I've got the import echo mail stanza which I'm just going to minimize down actually what I'll do is I'll page down to the bottom of it so it's right out of the way and then I'm going to paste a brand new stanza which I'm just copying off screen now and put it into this file so here it comes now boom and I'll just scroll up to the top of that and talk you through it so this is the file toss stanza and you'll find this in your uh, mutil.ini sort of uh, master file if you will if you want to use that as a uh, resource just as a source point and we're setting up a few things here so this is the stanza that processes the tick files from the incoming directory and moves or uploads files to appropriate file bases. Files are also tossed to the file boxes of downlinks, which we won't get into today. First thing we're going to do is we can set what's known as a bad directory. So if um, files come in that are failing for whatever reason to be tossed correctly, it's got to stick them somewhere. And um, this is where it will put them. It'll put them in C, Mystic Files, FSX, Bad File, and we'll create that now let's do that so we'll go into files see mystic files I'll create a, a new folder called FSX and inside that I'll create a new folder called bad file so we know that if I go back to that any file if there are problem files it's just going to drop them in there the next thing we have to decide is whether we want the mutil to toss these tick files or process tick files from unsecure directories as well as the secure inbound. So this is just like when we were talking about echo mail and the unsecure directories for messages same thing applies to files and you see I've set that to false so I don't want to import files from systems that I don't know that have connected and sent me stuff I'd rather deal with them on case by case basis. Now inside most files that are usually sent as zip files there's often a DIZ file which is a description file and Mystic can extract that and put that information into the file base or it can even look inside the accompanying tick file and that may contain a description. 
but if there is no description found you can set a text description here the against the no underscore DESC switch and I've just got it set for no description. Then you can also state the name of the uploader to use when um, you're adding files into your file base and it's coming in through uh, one of these accompanied tick files. So the default uploader I've just set to FSX net BBS but you could change that to the name of your BBS. The next two settings talk about testing the, the files themselves and making sure that the size and CRC values that are supplied in the tick file that accompanies those files is actually matching the file. And if not, then it'll get tossed into the bad directory. So, you know, something's wrong, you need to look at it. Now, the next one is whether or not files that have arrived from an unknown system will be processed. And if false, they'll be moved to the bad directory or deleted upon the configuration of settings. So, at this stage, I've got that set to false. So, we're not going to be processing files from systems we don't know about. This one's really cool though. If this allow underscore replace is set to true, then Mystic will allow the replace option that is set inside a tick file. And um, maybe this is a good time actually that just to show you what a tick file looks like, because you might recall from an earlier video that in the echo mail in directory we had some files that arrived, but I just moved them into a temp directory. And here they are. You see I've actually got the FSX info pack and I've also got this one here the FSX.Z55 that's a node list file and with each of them they're accompanied by a tick file so if I use my notepad plus 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 tick file and I open this up edit with notepad and this is the contents of a tick file and what it does is it says the area that this uh, file is associated with has an, an area tag uh, of fsx underscore info. It's showing that it's come from um, a system 2111. It's then come from the hub system. Uh, and here's the replaces verb. So what this does is when Mystic imports this file into the bulletin board file base, it uses the command inside the accompanying tick file to decide how to handle the import process. And in this case, it's going to remove other copies of anything that's fsxinfo.star and wipe them out and instead replace them with the contents of this new file. And you can also see that the file size is specified in the tick file. There's an accompanying description here. Um, and then you can also see um, the CRC details and then a bit of a path that shows all the systems that have actually seen this file and down the bottom of this it actually says this particular tick file is addressed to the uh, system that we're running which is the dummy system 211999 and you'll also see that there's a password that's set which in this case is just let me in which is the default password that goes against node 999. Now when you get a node number if you join FSXNet you'll need to change the password in your Mystic setup and you'll find that the files that are sent to you contain a different password in them which match the one that you've been given. So there's the replaces verb and that's a little bit of a quick discussion about the replacing side of things. So let's go back into mail in, any and uh, there's the allow replace. Now remember we used to, when we looked at the uh, message bases we talked about how you can get Mystic to auto create message bases. Well the same applies for file bases. So if it's importing a file um, for a base that it doesn't have set up it will automatically create them and in this case we've got auto create equals true and then further on we're starting to set up um, some default settings so the default directory that it would create the bases in is uh, C Mystic files the uh, default settings are here now the thing to point out is you know how we talked about um, message base. In fact let's have a look at it. We were going into the configuration side of things and in the editor we were looking at the message bases and message groups and recall we had two groups set up for messages. Group 1 for FSXNet and group 2 for local message bases. Well the same kind of thing happens for files. So we've got a file group editor and at the moment it just ships with default file groups. So let's rename 
group one and we'll call that fsxnet because that's going to be part of our file group. And in the file base editor, the only file base we've got at the moment is one called uploads, which at this stage you'll see um, is simply set to uh, upload to Mystic Files uploads. And there's no security settings or anything on that. I think what I would do with this one is I would set a security level of 10 so you don't have to be um, a validated user to see the, the file base. You um, don't have to be uh, a validated user to upload. As a system operator you might want to set that to 255 so that you've got to be the SISOP to be able to download from an upload space because this is where people are sending things to you and you probably want to move your files into another base. The Hatch ACS is actually at the time of recording this video not operational but what it will do in the future is allow you to configure the ability to hatch files from this base out to other systems. FTP access, Mystic ships with an FTP server and whether you want people to access that if you're running the server. So I'm just setting all of those to system operator at the moment. The data files called uploads, the path that the files are going to is uploads. And over here on this side of the screen, I'm not setting any particular files to display each time you look at this base. Um, and I'm displaying the uploader's name in the listing. So that's uploads, but we don't have at least two other message areas, or sorry, file bases, um, or file areas, whatever language you want to call set up at the moment. So you can see I need to create one with a tag that's FSX node and FSX info. Now I could manually type that in, and I probably will come back and tweak things, but we're going to use Mystic to actually do some of the grunt work for us. And in order to make sure that that happens, we need to just go back and check that these settings are correct. So firstly, if it receives anything at all at the moment, it's going to assign the following um, security settings in the, um, the creation of the file base. And you'll see the list setting is S10, but instead of a G, because it's a file base, the ACS string is a Z, it becomes a Z1. The FTP access, I think I will make that 255. Download access, I'm just going to set for 20, which is the, usually the default um, validated user, and all of the other settings I'm making 255. Um, further to that, if you um, want to set things up specifically so that you've got an echo node that you connect to, and in this case we're looking at the FSXNet hub, and we know that the hub address, uh, the system that we connect with, has got an address of 211100. Then you can see here I've actually configured a whole bunch of settings that hold true for um, files that are being sent from this address. And if the message or so the file base doesn't exist and the file is coming from the hub address for the FSX network, then it's going to automatically set the following things. And it knows that the bad directory will be here. Um, that it's going to create prefixes. I'm just going to put them, uh, let's do that there, we'll set this like that. So um, I think that's probably about all I can really say to this, but this is the process that, um, that we need to have. And then now that that's in place, I would just, uh, as part of my normal mail in e-file, I normally have those two functions enabled. So it's always going to import messages and it's also going to always check for files that have been sent to your system and act on them as well. So those are the two key functions that I suggest you have in your mail in any file. So is it going to work? This is kind of the acid test isn't it? Let's go and highlight these temp file, these files that we've received. I'm going to just paste them back into the um, echo mail in directory. And then I'm going to call up a command prompt, which I will bring on screen in just a sec. Here we go. And we're going to run mutual mail in, which is now going to process both any messages that are, that are there. Hey, why don't we Fido poll the hub? We might just see if there's some information there. 21.1.100. Oh, look at that. There's a few message packets or files that have been sent to us which are just messages. 
So now if I go mail uh, mutal mail in, there we go. So what have we done? It's run two processes. It's tossed FidoNet type um, files and tick files, and it's imported two. And it's also then imported the echo mail, the messages, and it's sucked in a further 88 messages into the system. Now let's have a look at the log files because I think that really is helpful to see as we go about discovering how all this stuff works. If I go into the mutil log file and I will just page up to find the um, stuff that's been going on. So here we go, this is the start of the file. Let's bring that up full screen. So the first thing it's doing is it's executing the file toss process and it's tossing the tick file fsxnet and it sees that there's a file here called fsxnet.z55 addressed for an area called FSX node, and it's from the hub. And because that didn't exist, it's actually created the file area, fsx underscore node. It realizes that it should replace any files in there already that have fsxnet as the um, start of the file name, and then it has added the file um, into the, uh, the base to fsx node. Then it's done the same thing with the other tick file. It's created a, an area called FSX info and it's added the zip file in there. And then it's gone ahead and imported lots of messages into the base. So how does this look now on the back end? So if I fire up the config software and we take a look at that, you'll see if we go into editors and file base editor, look at that. Two new file bases that have just been created Auto magically is the word I'd like to use. And if we press enter on that, look at that. All the hard work has pretty much been done. Um, we've got a base name. It's automatically populated the FTP name with the same details. Um, and, the, and it's just used the echo tag. Now the FTP name you might want to change if you run an FTP server. It might be um, FSX. Uh, dash node or something but you know you can leave that blank if you're not running an FTP server and as far as the base name is concerned I like to usually preface the name with the network and put a, a colon in it and then I do something like um, node lists because to someone looking at your file base that's going to make more sense. Um, this export files to these nodes by default it's going to export to the system or attempt to export to the system anything that you add to this base um, locally back up to the hub which is the, the system that sends you stuff. But you don't have to have that set if you don't want to. You could just uh, leave that disconnected but still stuff coming in from the hub would be fine. And then um, you see it set all the security settings as per the um, settings in Mutil. It's created a data file again just using the echo tag name and it's created a file path using the echo tag as a subdirectory for where the data file exists. So if we want to, and I'll just drop into the uh, browser again, we can go into Mystic, Files, oh look at that, it's just created it there. So um, FSX info and there's the info file, FSX node and there's the node list file. Um, and then it's got my FSX directory and the bad file that I created. So I could probably do a bit of work to tidy that up. But the point is you, you can see what, what is happening and you can often uh, tweak it to how you want it to look like and work. So that is cool. And then with the FSX info, same thing. I think I'll get rid of the FTP tag and I will just call this FSX semicolon space and we'll call that info and everything is part of um, group 1. See it's got the Z's, that's really important to point out, Z's are for file groups for the access strings but if you're in message areas it becomes G's for the groupings so that does catch people out. How about we fire up the bulletin board and take a look at it then. So if I go in as red72 and log in with my super secret password. This time I'll go into F for file areas and I'll join a group which we've just got the one group 
and there are three areas. If I go A for area change, you'll see it's displaying the uploads base and it's now also displaying the two other bases, one for node lists and one for info pack. If I go into the info pack base and list the files, there's the files, uh, or at least there is the file, the FSX info file. Um, I think I can press V to view that file and this is something Mystic does so well, you can just drill down inside uh, files that are compressed and read anything that's um, already inside the file. So there's the contents of the info pack, there's the dis um, uh, description file which I can just step out of, there's some information here about the network and uh, how to sign up, plus a whole bunch of other files in there as well. So next week the network will hatch another file out with a tick file and it will just replace the contents of this one. It will just swap them out like for like so that on this bulletin board there will always be at least one fsx info.zip file in this base and it will always be the latest one. So I'm going to stop the video there and we'll be looking at some other settings shortly uh, about how you can automate some more of this and in fact I think the next one we'll do is we'll talk about how you can use that node list file that's been sent to you from the FSX network to take a look and use this thing called the nodeless browser which is a feature inside Mystic which at the moment if I type the word um, Hayton which is my surname it's probably going to find nothing exactly but once we've gone through the next video I'll show you how you can um, use Mutil to create pretty much like a phone list that allows you to look up other systems using the nodeless browser as always, thank you for watching and uh, please feel free to subscribe to the channel. If you have any questions, you can leave them in some of the comments or just contact me through the um, other options listed on this channel page. Bye for now.